was always there, fighting for freedom over land and air. G.I. Joe! Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you can see, I got a bunch of G.I. Joes sitting out in front of me. And you know that the Target elusive Cobra Island Joes have been out there and I've been slowly trying to track them down, but they've been pretty secluded except for Roadblock, who's been pretty readily available. And you can actually order him through the app to pick up in store. Um, Beachhead, I got lucky enough to find him on the shelf on August 14th, which was opening day. And if you saw my Baroness video, it was uh, thanks to a fantastic Target employee who scanned the thing on the shelf and immediately said, let me be right back. Came back with the Baroness figure. Up until then, I had my custom Baroness that I was using, and I'm not gonna completely throw that figure to the wind now that I got the official one. I think it's decent enough to display with the rest of my figures. Gung Ho showed up in the mail from Amazon. Okay, got my Amazon Prime package today. Of course, it's in a bubble miller. So let's see how this thing turned out. G.I. Joe. Gung Ho. Was still on back order from Hasbro Pulse. So now I can cancel that for sure. And uh, Amazon was first to deliver. And even though it was in a bubble mailer, we do have some box damage there. And there, just wish they would pack these a little bit better. That's fine, I'm an open box collector. You know, normally I like to do a review with my vintage figures. I went through my vintage figures and didn't really find Gung Ho, and I realized this is the only Gung Ho I have, and um, he's kind of not all together right now, so there's not gonna be a comparison for Gung Ho, but let's just take a look at the package. He is box number seven, which is Kind of cool. Still got that same window here with the emblems. Got some artwork on the front. Got artwork on the side. And you can see it looks like there's the red ninja down there. So that's kind of neat to think that we're going to have that. And the standard front box art. So let's open it up and take a look at this figure and see how he sits with the rest of these guys. Okay, so we got this character unboxed and he does come with a backpack. And on the backpack, it's got some detailing in there, which is kind of nice. It's got that. I really like this when they do this little stitching type pattern. When they do this little pattern on the um, plastic, makes it look kind of like fabric. It actually gives it some nice texture and a nice look to it. I think they did a good job with the molding. They did uh, a lot of attention to detail in there. The backside, not so much, but you're not going to really see that when it's up against his back. He's got these little clips here obviously those are for holding his weapons which are kind of cool so we're going to take a look at those and what we do is we've got like some sort of a shock rifle here it's got like some sort of a pump action i don't know what he's reloading if it's shooting some sort of a shock or a pulse but it's got like um it would have been cool if this slid back and forth like when you had with the old uh, 12 inch joes you had some little action on the uh weapons He's got this rifle here, which has a handle up front, and obviously this is some sort of a reload. Which is kind of interesting here, as we look at these weapons, is that they're really all one color. There's no um, blemishing or anything like that. Here you got like some sort of a cannon with some sort of um, uh, like magazine type, not a magazine, but like a cylinder, which shoots uh, some sort of a, a round, obviously. And there's like a hole in this one. So this one's more of a traditional style weapon. But you can see that it's all really one color. It's like a gray. So unlike Destro, which has a multicolored weapon, and Roadblock, which has some multicolored weapons, and even Duke, whose weapon has some two-toning in there, the Baroness had pretty much all gold except for her sheath, which had the gold handle. Beachhead had all green weapons, and this guy's got all grayish silver weapons, uh, which I found kind of interesting, but let's take a closer look at this figure here. So here we got Gung Ho, and the first thing we notice is that he's got his tattoo on his chest. Um, 
okay, it's decent. I like the uh, printing on there. It looks pretty good. And, you know, he's got his, uh, his physique. So he does have, looks like, a six-pack going on. And he's very muscular. He's got some good detailing here. He's got this nice little arm piece, which um, has this little piece. It would have been nice if they would have added something on there, like a little uh, color to make it look like it was like some sort of a screen or something. But because that's maybe just arm protection, that's fine. He's got one elbow pad, but he doesn't have like any type of a sniper rifle where he would like lay on the ground with a sniper rifle. So it kind of makes me wonder why he has just one elbow pad. He does have these things that look like grenades up here and I'm not pulling too hard, but they don't appear detachable. So you're not gonna be taking those off anytime soon. And he does have what looks like it could be some type of a compass or GPS locator. Um, this is soft. So easily that can come off if he's going to be doing some fisticuffs, right? But let's just leave that on for now. We'll take a look at it. So his hat is also a soft, durable material. So with the hat on, looks pretty decent, right? It's got like a nice hat on it. You can see it's got some sort of a, a emblem up top, which is supposed to be some sort of a rank, I'm guessing. Looks like some stripes or something like that, but it's all one tone, so you can't really tell. It's like an old hat. So anyways, you pull it off, and he's not bald after all. He's got his little mohawk going, which is pretty good. Standard for your old um, tough military types, right? Uh, so he's got his mohawk going on. That's kind of nice. He's not bald after all, like I thought. He's got uh, some camouflage pants. He's got a nice pocket on the side here. You don't see if he's got a pocket on that side because he's got this, um, oh yes, he's got a pocket on that side, but you don't see it because it's covered up with these, uh, this grenade pouch or whatever. So he does have camouflage around his leg and this looks like it's painted to be some type of a knee pad, but it's not like a knee pad like uh, some of the other ones have. It's just painted black maybe to match the fact that he has one knee pad on the arm and one knee pad on the leg. Um, he does have some downward motion on his head. Surprising to me that he doesn't really look up that much. Well, I guess he does. I guess I just had to push a little bit. It was a little bit tough to get his head to look up um, without any hair or anything. And this jacket doesn't really get in the way. He's, oh my gosh, does he have the same problem as Roadblock? He just lost an arm in battle? That is crazy. I mean, I barely moved that figure. So anyways, he, um, he's he got the double jointed hinge, so he does have good range of motion, does go back. He does have more than 90 de degrees there on his elbow bend. And that doesn't really hinder him at all. Oh my gosh. I don't know. That may bother me a lot. Um, oh, I just have to be careful. So here's the wrist movement and the hand movement does have some back and forth. Let me see if this one gets a little bit more. Okay, that one has that much. Doesn't really go back that much. I don't want to push it because you saw what happened with his arm joint. Yeah, like you can see, like I'm barely pushing on that and it wants to dislodge from that. Uh, that's another problem there. So he's got the hip motion and upper body movement, he's got this upper leg movement, and he's got the double jointed knee, which gives him about that much motion. He does have an upper leg movement here, and he does got his feet. I mean, this is actually a really good looking figure, and you can easily take this vest off. It'll be much easier because I could just pop that arm off, and then I don't have to go down the rest of the arm. See, like that? Maybe that's why the arm comes off, so that you could get that uh, that jacket off if you wanted to. So anyways, there you got uh, Gung Ho with his shirt off. And he may want to take somebody on, right, in a fight. He could actually be a WWE figure. 
So anyways, he looks pretty good. I'm glad that they made the vest uh, removable. They could have did something similar with like roadblock in his vest and maybe even beachhead to make those vests kind of removable since they're like a soft pliable plastic. Um, but they didn't, so we just have what we have. I bet you if you took off roadblock's vest though, it would look very similar. I'm not happy that that arm popped off. That to me seems like a defect. But um, if you watched any of my other videos, you know that it was uh, two months of me going back and forth with Hasbro just to get some resolution on it. Um, and I don't know if I'm willing to go through that again. I think that's why they make it so difficult. Let's just suit him up. Okay, so I've been trying to put these guns in the backpack uh, into these little clips here. And I didn't use any instructions or anything. But every time I kind of grab him to try to put his hat back on or something like that, they do just kind of fall out. Um, so it's going to be like some tasking here because this thing doesn't really want to stay on. It's You can tell that this backpack's kind of loose. And if I try to push it onto his back, I do lose a little bit of um, that. Like the guns, they don't want to stay in these little pieces. I'm pretty sure that's what they're for. But you see, you barely touch it and they just fall out. And... Um, I'm pretty sure that's how they're supposed to go. I mean, I, I don't really see any other reason why. Anyways, I think it looks pretty decent. If you look closely at it, he's got like a pretty nice face sculpt there, right? Um, the one thing I do like about these G.I. Joes so far is I don't feel like I've gotten any like duplicate face sculpts. I feel like everybody kind of looks individual for the most part. I mean, even within um, the Winter Storm Shadow and the Beachhead, where you really only see their eyes, um, they do look like they're not just molds of the same cutouts of eyes. It could be the paint fooling me, but I'm not seeing that resemblance. Even between Destro and um, Duke, I'm not seeing that that face is like the same face. And this is definitely... A different sculpt too just by the way the eyes are set and um, you know the nose and stuff like that and the fact that they between Scarlet and the Baroness I feel like those face sculpts have been different so I'm kind of glad about that because when I look at some of the Marvel Legends superheroes I feel like I'm seeing a lot of the same face but anyways this review is about gung-ho I was happy to get them I'm not happy about that arm, uh, but you know what? This is, uh, I did cancel my pre-order with Hasbro once this one arrived in the mail because I was like, well, I got my gung-ho. I don't need to have another one coming. So I got one sooner, way sooner than I thought I was going to. I still have some other stuff on pre-order. Um, and that's another video altogether coming up. Why I'm probably going to cancel all of my pre-orders. Anyways, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget, come back for more.